The new technology of war. Mondays on Discovery Science. In the early 1900s, someone pulled off a hoax so clever and daring that it fooled scientists for more than 40 years. It was a terrible distraction. It led people away and, and, and down an avenue, which obviously was a cul-de-sac. It was going nowhere. Um, so the impact was tremendous. Who was the hoaxer? Fresh evidence has reopened the case and introduced a new suspect. The story begins in 1912, near the southern English town of Lewis, in the little village of Piltdown. An amateur archaeologist named Charles Dawson was digging in a gravel pit. He claimed to have found a piece of an ancient human skull. Dawson invited England's leading geologist, Arthur Smith Woodward, of the Natural History Museum, to join him at Piltdown. He also invited a French paleontologist, Father Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. That summer, the trio made astonishing finds at the gravel pit. Archaeologist Chris Stringer heads the Natural History Museum in London. The original Piltdown bones remain here under lock and key. There were stone tools and there were animal fossils, animal fossils which seemed to give an age to the site that was very ancient. In modern terms, this site would have been perhaps a million years old. The fossils were sensational. Up to this point, scientists had discovered the remains of primitive humans in France, Germany, and Asia, but none in England. I think one could say there probably was jealousy on the part of some British scientists that we just didn't have the remains. It was Charles Dawson who dug up the most astonishing fossil of all, a jawbone, apparently part of the same skull. And this was the surprise, because this jawbone did not look human. It was very much like the jawbone of an ape in its basic shape. It has this shelf of bone at the front. The whole shape of the jaw is ape-like. And yet the teeth showed what seemed to be a human wear pattern. They were worn flat, as would be human teeth. It looked like the trio had come upon the holy grail of paleontology, the missing link between apes and humans. In December 1912, here in the meeting room of the Royal Geological Society, Woodward made the first public announcement of their momentous discovery. Scientists cheered the news enthusiastically. Here at last was the evidence that England, like other great countries, had ancient human fossils. What's more, England's human ancestors might turn out to be the oldest of all. The newspapers dubbed the discovery Piltdown Man. Woodward's prestige erased any doubts about Piltdown Man, though he specialized in fish fossils, not human evolution. One of Piltdown Man's greatest supporters was Arthur Keith, England's leading anatomist. The fossils backed up his personal theory of human evolution, that humans developed big brains before they walked upright. Scientists now know the opposite is true. Upright walking developed long before the big brain. Another interested observer was a young volunteer at the Natural History Museum named Martin Hinton. He apparently disliked his boss, the autocratic Arthur Woodward. Over the next couple of years, Teilhard, Woodward, and especially Dawson uncovered more fossils at Piltdown. These additional finds silenced all remaining skeptics, at least in public. There probably was a reluctance on the part of many people to risk upsetting the establishment by actually challenging the find. Uh, you know, you'd have had to have been a brave person to face up to Smith Woodward and Arthur Keith 
and challenge their interpretations of this find. And so I think people, even people who suspected, kept their suspicions to themselves. For the next decade, the model of Piltdown Man dominated research on human evolution. Even though no more Piltdown Man fossils turned up after Charles Dawson died in 1916. But by the 1920s, scientists had begun to discover ancient remains elsewhere, in Asia and in Africa. These fossils didn't jibe with the Piltdown fossils. The new finds came from human ancestors that lived hundreds of thousands of years after Piltdown Man, but their skulls were less human, not more human. Was Piltdown Man just some weird misstep on the path of human evolution? There was no easy way to tell, because today's lab tests, including accurate dating methods, did not yet exist. And the Natural History Museum allowed few outsiders to examine the Piltdown bones. Distinguished specialists were allowed to see the material, but it was kept under pretty close guard. So it was not given the wide study, which perhaps might have thrown up some of the inconsistencies which turned up later.